Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 Long War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and this is the legendary Iron Man uh, run of Better One of the mod. We're playing on the highest difficulty, trying to beat the game, the dreaded Long War legendary Iron Man uh, run. Everyone should give it a try if they have a little bit of time on, on their hands. It is month number six. We just successfully crushed two network towers. And I almost must say that kind of the double uh, or the 200 percent invasion it was too easy with the uh, with the main squad and that's not uh, me bragging that's simply stating the obvious we curb stomped it like there is no tomorrow like um, it was almost both of them uh, flawless and the enemies really didn't stand much of a chance which lets me to believe that we are in a really good position and a good shape to go for the actual hqs I'm not sure if our prime team needs 200% um, 200 infiltration. I'll kind of make it dependent on what else is going on on the uh, globe. If you don't have another mission that is popping up, might as well infiltrate for 200%. What I can promise you is we're going to invade both of the um, HQs at the same time, meaning that we're going to have a good team and an alpha team like the a team and we're going to have a slightly worse uh, team which is going to be more challenging speaking about a slightly worse team we're uh, here with uh, a team of newbies prime spark uh, is taking a specialist grenadier sharpshooter and assault uh, pretty much all of them squaddies as you can see up to uh, the maximum of a uh, sergeant rank and these here are now the kind of rookies where we can test out new builds and so on uh, anyways we're going for a seasoned grab mission in what appears to be i think it was the wilderness but we're going to see about that it's an Supposing the easy mission with 18 um, enemies as a baseline, or just trying to get one or two crates, guys, uh, nothing too fancy. So let's jump into it. Good, here we go. Landed just right next to the crash uh, zone. Not even sure how well a spark can ever be like concealed. The answer is it can't. So we got to be a bit careful. We're not too far away from the first crate. So what we're going to do is we're positioning our sniper here in high ground because it's the obvious choice. And then let's make sure that we're not running into anything that could immediately spot us out. So it moves forward. No need to ask twice. And our grenadier moves over here. Go, go, go. We are steadying the weapon with a sniper. And last but certainly not least, our mech is moving in. Prime Spark, as they called it. Um, I like the black color. That looks even more intimidating than the second one that I designed in the white color. And it got 19 hit points plus a point of armor. Imagine we would be upgrading the armor. This thing would be huge. In hindsight, we should have probably taken the mechs a bit earlier. There uh, had been a drone just moving to here, so it is pretty dangerous to move through here because that would just trigger immediately. So the question is how can we get line of sight without triggering? Is there anyone with a reduced detection radius no that is very lamentable a 
I mean, we can do this here, right? Roger that. Okay, I figured that that would be a thing. And we could do... This here, right? Closing on target position now. Okay. Well, at least we made a little bit of progress. Okay. Very careful movements here. We're steadying our weapons. The mech, by the way, seems to be also hidden or concealed, but I don't think that that's going to be the case very soon. So I'm planning for a full-fledged overwatch scenario where the drone is going to spot us out and we're essentially going to start from here. I wanted to shut it down, but it was hiding so well behind the tree I couldn't really see it. And since drones don't take cover, uh, you can't see them behind the trees. It's not like a soldier who's taking cover. There you go. I knew it. Good. We officially started. This here is going to be our extraction zone. In five. This is <laughs> Evac request confirmed. Hold tight. Moving in. On my way. Didn't uh, trigger anything, surprisingly. Good, the mech is moving in as well. And we can double move. Stepping off. That's still three overwatch shots. And so far nothing has been marked. Continue to steady our weapon. And we are overwatching. There's the next pack, which we're triggering. Grandier plus Sergeant. No, Grandier plus Shield Bearer. All right. Oh, it's nice if they are already starting with a shield. They also marked the crates, so we definitely need to start moving in. Moving up to here to secure the crate. And another drone. It's fine. I like drones. I mean, they are essentially cannon fodder. And you you can ignore them to a certain degree. They are just annoying. It's not that they can really kill your soldier right away. Good. We're marking the supplies. The second chest uh, we're most likely not going to get. 
locator is down and our transponder is active. Fire That's almost 100% kill. That could be almost 100% kill, so we should be careful here. Moving into a flanking position. And there we go. <laughs> That's a pretty damn good shot. Nice. Good, we're continuing to steady the weapon, just to have better odds to hit. I mean, this is indestructible cover, I think at least it is. But we need to shred this guy anyways, just to have a better chance of uh, getting, getting through his armor. I don't think that we can remove the towers. No, we can't. It's pretty much uh, secured cover. Yeah, 34%, not the best. We could... Move up here. Heading out. And let's make sure he's not hitting anyone. We can kill him next round. Sparks on Overwatch. And even if we're losing a crate, that's fine. Mostly we're in here for the XP anyways. And for the drops. Uh, the loot of the enemies is often more valuable than the few supplies that we would get out of the chests. So task number one, survive. Task number two, get XP. And kind of priority number three, if possible, get some extra loot. There's another pack. This time we're fighting against three Vipers. Unfortunately, the Overwatch again doesn't work. Fourteen hit points, Vipers. Wow, not something else. So this here hopefully does not pull another pack. I want the loot and I want to kill this guy. This is just a very good position to do both. Unfortunately the loot sucks. Okay, that was that did not work as planned. Not at all. Let's see if we can somehow get a bit closer. Can we flank any of these? No, we can't, not yet.
Moving into full cover. Also got to be a bit careful here. Don't want to trigger yet another pack. Rapid deployment because it has no downside to use it. Did they just place themselves around the tree in a way that you can't hit all three? Seriously? Ooh, clever little beasts. So, okay, they definitely did that. In which case we're taking both of you. Okay, time to remove some cover. This should deal with a big viper. <sighs> Why is the stone after a plasma grain? Why isn't it removed at all? to here overdriving so we got one extra shot let's try to get the shield bearer I knew that the chances weren't great May I mention that that is two times one hit point left. We continue to steady the weapon for next round. Let's give an aid protocol to our assault who is completely being flanked. And get an overwatch going in case something is moving. He might move, take an overwatch shot and might die. Chances are slim. Well, I was correct on almost everything. He's in explosion range. If we can like light this one here up, it'll deal a lot of damage. All right. Took some heavy damage, but that was all just into protection so far. Prime Spark moves on. and takes his revenge. Nice one. 
<laughs> Alright, moving into flanking position, hopefully not triggering anything else. Alright, that works well. By the flanking position, he got nothing. Rock and roll. This is not a secured kill, which is why I want to have someone else soften the target up. Fifty fifty, come on, at least soften it up. Good, that's good. Because that allows us after death from above to always continue steadying our weapon. Carefully, moving in. Oh yeah, I'm willing to destroy a, um, a crate or two. Unless they leave us no choice, we should try to avoid death. Bradford's opinion of that is, of course, that we sucked as uh, as always. Should have tried much harder to get the crates in the middle of a firefight. So we killed three vipers, a pack of three advents, but six, drone, seven. I think that's it. Moving in. Marking the supplies. Moving in, grabbing the loot. And this is as far as I would like to go. Nice. Advanced suppressor and an alarium core. That's good. A lot of cash loot. Which means from now on, we're moving back. Absolutely. We're marking even one more supply crate. And we're covering the retreat. Will do. Sniper moves forward and if everything goes according to plan, we should be out of here kind of in one or two rounds. We wanted to have one to two crates, and I think we got out with three, if I'm not mistaken. This is Firebrand. It's time to go. Yeah, we got three crates. Everything else would be probably a bit greedy. Also, we got, I think, eight or nine kills overall. I hope you can keep up. So yeah, we can extract everyone and I think we even flawless the overall mission. Be 
Yes, we could have had more kills. But it would have become exponentially more dangerous plus more tiring. So sometimes having more like flawless small missions is actually advantageous. And in our case, these crates here, realistically, unless I would have made a big push for them, we wouldn't have been able to take them anyways. The odds, if you go in with a rookie team just like we uh, had, the odds are heavily stacked against you. And just getting them through the first few levels, I think, Looks like they called in is good enough as a reward for me. If we could get a few promotions out of it, that'll be fine. That's actually the most valuable uh, thing. I would say, in my personal uh, book, you can add per rank of a soldier, you can add like 20 supplies, just as a general rule of thumb. And that is how much a soldier is worth, probably in the higher levels, even more than that. So I would say if I had the uh, option in a late game mission and I would be like really resource starved to get kind of a kernel or 400 supplies, that would be pretty even. Uh, so. You can imagine that XP is just worth supplies uh, because it creates value for your team. Anyways, all right, and there we are. Look at that. Four promotions. Prime Spark. Besides being formidable, let's see what else we can do. Rainmaker, equipped heavy weapon, deals plus two damage and has an increased area of effect. That's not bad. The Shredder was already pretty damn good. Yeah, I think that's not too bad. Body Shield is a pretty decent ability, but I think it's quite easy to see that we want Shredder. It's just such a good ability. Alright, here we're probably going for Santa Mars just to increase uh, the actual... Oh no, we wanted... Hmm. I remember. We wanted to build the newbies a little bit different. Uh, we're pretty probably still going there from above. The holo target ones. I mean, that one is okay. That one is actually quite useful. That one is also useful. If you skill all of the holo targets, I can see how that is fine. Yeah, I just don't see much of a variety. It's different flavors. I could either increase the damage or of the weapon or essentially her ability to hit, right? So, big deal. Yeah, why not? I mean, we here's the deal. She will, as a lobby character, she will always have shit weapons, right? So we might as well give her damn good ground and Lone Wolf, uh, which if she stands completely alone, uh, she would get plus 20 to hit and uh, plus 10 defense, plus 20 defense. So uh, that's not too bad. I can see how that makes sense. So that could be a build path that 
that actually um, that actually makes sense. I'm not just trying to build something different for the purpose of doing something different. I actually would want to build something that you guys could use as well. So as uh, someone who needs a lot of aim, which she certainly could use, but she already has incredibly high aim, right? So that here would probably push it over the top. She has a lot of defensive abilities here, Resilience and Formidable. Both of them together with the defense buffs plus low profile probably make her really hard to hit. Yeah, I mean, we can go for that build. I like the additional damage, uh, to be honest. I think it's almost mandatory for a sniper to have a lot of damage. But for the purpose of this experiment, hmm. We wanted to play something different with them, so might as well try it. So we're going for them good ground. We're going for Lone Wolf. We pick up Formidable and Resilient, which means uh, no chance uh, for crit. Uh, bonus Ablative Power, lesser damage from Explosives, plus 20 defense with a Grappling Suit that would be plus 40 defense later. So that would actually be pretty damn good. Uh, low profile to full profile and then we're going to see how we're skilling her further for him normally I would go for lightning reflexes and kind of uh, do a mixture of the breacher and the middle one which doesn't even have a name so rapid fire it's essentially lightning reflexes into close and personal, fortify, formidable, rapid fire, untouchable, and then level, which is pretty much the breacher route. So why not take uh, the radar route this time or the electroshock route? Let's double check what, what we want this build to look like. Um, I mean, this here is a ranged attack with a shotgun. This here is pretty much a cone-based attack with a shotgun. So both are attacks that uh, don't require you to flank automatically. Um, additional crit. A faster run and gun cooldown. All of that is good. I think I like it. Hit and run. I could see where that is going, a hit and run instead of rapid fire and basically faster uh, faster flanking and shots from a little bit more distance. I like electro uh, shock. It's actually a de decent ability because uh, if you miss with your shocker, um, you automatically uh, disorient the target, which is good. Uh, that one is also pretty damn good if you go for the tasers that would be a bonus to hit with a taser <laughs> well I mean that's a cool one as well right so you're going for all the uh, all the tasing abilities Yeah, you're going for all of the tasting abilities. I would probably still put in Formidable and uh, Rapid Fire one. So are we going to go with the taser route with him? Or are we using the shotgun uh, versions? I think the taser is fun and all, but here's the deal. At the, at the end, the taser is already an okay weapon. And... It will not really change the play style all too much. I mean, every it has a one round cooldown, so you're always going to do something else. And then taking the stun uh, stun gun again, 
it definitely starts completely shining once you have chain lightning because uh, that'll be a massive cooldown. But I think we're going to go with the extra shots here. In this case, it's a uh, stuck shot, special shot with primary weapon, shotguns only, uh, no penalty, uh, two uh, will reduce, um, will pierce two armor points, three turn cooldown, but requires a little bit more ammunition. Um, it's fine for longer distance. We were sometimes in that situation. Unfortunately, we don't have lightning reflexes now, but it is what it is. Um, and here with the medic, for now, I wouldn't uh, since we have already skilled her quite a bit, I wouldn't do any uh, deviations from the normal build path. Uh, but the new specialists that were uh, that were building up will uh, branch out into different building paths. Okay, so 22 supplies, which is great. Ellen Lois, uh, Elarium crystals, advanced suppressor, Elarium core, and another PCS. So a lot of cash loot on top of uh, that as well. We're currently, by the way, training a specialist and a gunner, if I'm not mistaken. So we're training the next generation of uh, soldiers that are a little bit different. Let's wait until Zirkim is fully recovered. Got a couple of recruits in South America. There we go. Recruiting definitely works very well. Here, look at that. Brazil is almost completely filled up with uh, recruits. We got 11 out of 12. That is pretty damn good. Uh, we can start our uh, intel gathering very soon. And I'm wondering, I think Sirkim is has recovered by now, right? Last time it said 22 hours. 22 hours can't be that long. Okay, two hours, whatever. All right, officer training. Uh, I wanted to uh, to click on the bond, but apparently it doesn't let you upgrade the bonds in the officer training. So officer training. I would probably need both of the shinobis. No, we're only needing one shinobi. Never mind. Good. In two hours, we finally have Zirkin back, and that means we can start our um, infiltration. We're going to go with uh, two 10-man squads for both of uh, the HQs at the same time. And we're going to deploy our best uh, troops uh, there. Good. Master Sergeant Sirkim has recovered from his wounds. We are going to go to South Africa this time with our prime team and West Africa with a second team. Both have similar high levels of um, 
of enemy force. You know what? I think West Africa has a higher uh, level of enemy forces. So the vigilance level is just higher. Which means the potential enemies are higher. Let me... No! Oh, good. Ah... Uh... Well, we can't do a supply rate with three hours anyways. I absolutely hate the Geoscape and that it is lagging as much as it does. So what I wanted to do is, by the way, a supply rate for three hours. It's not going to work. We need to focus our energy in liberating the areas. So we're going. what I wanted to say is we're going to infiltrate both of the areas. Uh, it's two ten, uh, ten men squads. So it's going to be a really large scale invasion. And we got to bring our A game with us. Let me uh, let me clear the squad and find a good A team that I am feeling comfortable with. All right, and we are back. That is the A team. We got all of the hero classes, Fury, Hardringer and Outrider in one squad. We furthermore have Zirkum as a damage dealer, together with Dark Tarnoxus, uh, who is shredding and can deal extra damage to uh, to mechanical units. We got uh, the Bang Brothers, uh, Renvin and Roby. We got Hayward, who uh, is going to be our main sniper. She got a, a really nice aim in the meantime. We got Edgar Elian Poe, who's the major of this team with all of the extra nice abilities, and another cover removal in Nasty, because currently uh, Mike um, is on a covered ops mission, so he's subbing in for him. That's pretty much as good as it gets. Almost all of our uh, named uh, characters are here, and we got pretty much a banger team right from the get go. Love it. I feel confident that we might even be able to kind of do this mission at 100% instead of a 200% um, assault. Let's do the exact same down here. And basically create the B team. If we can pull this off, it's incredibly greedy, but if we can pull this off, we would have liberated both of the regions and we would be swimming in money. It'll be great. Let me fix that real quick. All right, the second team is ready and that might be something um, where that might be something where we are actually using 30 Intel to boost it. Uh, I am going with 9 instead of 10 soldiers, basically reducing the infiltration time from 23-24 days to 16. It's kind of a trade-off that I'm willing to do, uh, going in with just one less soldier and uh, instead saving a lot of days. And with a B-Squad, uh, that might be uh, an, an infiltration over 100%. Uh, we're going for 150-ish percent, so uh, might as well spend some intel to do that. We got uh, Taxman here, uh, Mike the Public Bravo, uh, we got Ragtime, we got Sean Seanigans, we got Quickfeet, Kachais, Papi, uh, Diva, uh, Diva Raibok, and last but not least we added uh, Blaze. So we're going in with Dual Sniper this time, which is going to be an interesting experience. Let's see how the team is going to do. None of the hero classes, but all of uh, the other goodies. The team should probably do fairly well. I'm actually confident that both uh, teams could theoretically handle 100% infiltration, which means more enemies and just a bigger fight. So depending on how many missions we're now going to find whilst we're assaulting in the next 20 days, um, 
we may or may not uh, start the infiltration a little bit earlier. So A team and the B team are essentially off to infiltrate, which means really uh, almost like, yeah, more more than half of our roster is gone. You know, to even put a, a pull the Haven advisor out of Brazil to make this one work. If you look at our just roster, you will uh, you will see that most of them are infiltrating. I mean, look at that infiltration, a bit covert ops missions in between, and then that is all they are doing. Like short of short of a Haven advisor here and a Haven advisor here, which we could technically pull uh, pull out. Um, of uh, the havens, uh, essentially the first almost one third, no, first half of our uh, roster, like 20 soldiers, are uh, doing covert ops missions or infiltrating really strategically important targets, which means for the next month we got to play with the bottom half of our roster. Uh, that will be interesting <laughs> to say, to say the least. We're going to put another specialist here, Sir Haven Advisor. Good. And in the meantime, I think we're just going to scan for more supplies. We're going to have a big fat supply drop of almost 200 supplies, which are desperately needed. I am considering to get more powered armor. We got a prototype. Setting course for the East African sector. Or we're investing it into Gauss rifles. That would be also an option. Just so that the Prime team really has some upgraded stuff. Good. Let's scan. I think. We're done for the month. <laughs> and of course, the moment that we are uh, no longer having the main team available, I bet you now a wave of new missions will be starting. And we will essentially only do new missions. Let me staff this uh, smash and grab mission real quick. All right, the team is ready. We're going in with uh, the a very similar uh, squad like the last smash and grab mission. Um, got a well-rounded team. This time added uh, uh, Shinobi. And by the way, uh, with the leveling up, our prime spark. Now has to call Sim Bishop. I think that sounds good. I am happy about it. So uh, this team will start to do a smash and grab mission. And apparently there are also losses in the area. So this might become spicy. Luckily we have enough infiltration time. So it really shouldn't be much of a problem at all. Five days, six hours, that is enough time to actually launch the whole um, supply raid. We would get a lot of uh, supplies as well as corpses out of there. So let's see if we might be able to kind of field a team of, I would say, six, seven. With boosts, we might be able to get to 100%. Let me field the team real quick. Good, and we put together our last squad, which is essentially a sniper. Pop Ross as a support scooter, as, a, as a, the muscle glitch for cover removal and ghost to go up in personal. And we added an additional support. Double med pack with additional med packs uh, essentially guarantees that we will at least outlast for many, many, many rounds. 
And I think that is what we need to do. We're either fighting against 37 enemies uh, and really try to do it the hard way. Or if I invest a little bit of intel, we're going up for against 25 enemies, which I think is more doable. The weapons are okay, and for a six-man squad, 25 is fine. 37 to 39 uh, is probably a bit too much. So I am considering to most likely use intel in order to uh, succeed on the mission. Essentially, we're trading 30 intel against a lot of loot, all of the corpses that we can find, and mucho mucho experience. So this here should be a profitable trade for us. One of the things uh, that I wanted to show you, though, is I I guess we're at capacity. You might ask yourself, second, why are you building like these gigantic rosters? Um, and for people who have not played uh, Long War before, that might be a bit alien in the, in the truest form of the meaning, but you need that many uh, people in order to just keep up with everything. Look at at least uh, uh, look at the last month as a baseline. Eight guerrilla ops, okay. We had uh, um, cover, covered ops, two missions, proving ground projects. Well, we only had eight uh, guerrilla ops, but that did not include the two towers that we did on top of it. So it's 10 missions in the month before. I think we had 16. So it, it's actually pretty high pace overall. Training is bad. Um, economy is not so bad. And the additional dark event is, of course, not super good. Um, yeah, we, we need to continue finding where they are and essentially eliminate them. Good. Aliens hide among um, populace, uh, placing facelands everywhere. Stun answers gate infat ability, which grants a bonus to dodge against nearby enemies. Great, so we can't even kill them uh, that easily with melee attacks then. And there's another hidden event, so all of them are bad. This is uh, the order that we got from a covert ops last time. This is another order that we got from covert ops last time. And I think we're going to put the additional shred in here together with instant kill. That's exactly what we wanted to do. Research breakthroughs twice likely to happen. It's fine. It's fine with me. And you can see we need to essentially raise the influence level. Plus spend some more Plus, spend some more um, resources in upgrading uh, the um, the resistance ring. I think we can do that right away now. It's actually not a bad idea. So this time we got a lot of income, like almost two hundred, and we didn't even scan for it. Which isn't too bad, so, I mean, considering the circumstances, it's the first time or the second time that we even got some income. And if you can see with 12, um, with 12 soldiers or resistance operatives on supply, this no um, East African base, or North Africa is what I'm always calling it, uh, alone creates almost 500 supplies. So imagine we can multiply that with uh, two additional liberated regions. We will be filthy rich for once. Got ourselves another rookie which gives us a bit of uh, time to also take a look at our armory. I wanted to show you that anyways. So what I wanted to uh, say before the month then kicked in is we're having like this gigantic roster now. 
but still everyone is busy. Look at that. Infiltration, 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 infiltration. And that is three missions plus two major uh, missions at the same time. On top of it, we do have uh, covert ops uh, mission running. We got Haven Advisors. We got bond training. We got uh, training for our um, uh, for our um, lead leadership ratings here, Oscar Mike, and incoming training. So the Shinobis are training to become essentially leaders or commanders, is I think what it's called. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Three on covert ops, two leadership training, two bond training, one negative, um, uh, one negative um, effect, a couple in the Haven advisory, and then just one billion in infiltration. Okay, so with the newcomers, we wanted to have one more specialist, which we're currently getting. And if I'm not completely mistaken, we wanted um, this one here to become either an assault or a shinobi, probably a shinobi with the lousy aim that the rookie has. And we could go for an assault over here. Alternatively, I think we wanted to have another technician. So Jesus could also be a technician. And this here could be... Yeah, you know what? Let's make him a technician. And she's going to be a shinobi. That makes sense. Let's start. Let's start with him. He has a high uh, aim score. We're okay on assaults. Might need one more. Just got a gunner. Got a, yeah, we're okay on grenadiers. Okay on rangers. We just got a few sharpshooters. Uh, almost. You cannot have almost too many specialists. So maybe. We're making it a technician and a specialist. Maybe a technician and an assault. Hmm. Let's go for the technician at the moment. Like I was initially planning. And we can still do the Shinobi. Good. Time to continue scanning. And that's probably the worst thing that could have happened. Hmm. So let's double check real quick how we want to react. Um, how we want to react to that infiltration mission? Are we are we essentially setting course for each are we essentially sacrificing one of our infiltrations for the HQs? Probably not. Are we spending some intel and getting a team down there? Could uh, speed up this hack here. Hack the workstation and get it to 100%. That'll be an option. The other option is to essentially skip the supply rate, take the entire team, uh, take the, the Haven advisors and take an eight-man squad and go for go for 
that mission. And I think that's exactly what we need to do. I mean, the supply rate would have costed us 30 intel. It would have given us good loot, don't get me wrong. But missing a supply rate is not the absolute end of the world. Um, depending on how this mission here goes, we might as well do the supply rate afterwards. I don't know how how well it's going. Sky Ranger deployed. So I bought the infiltration. Sucks because we lost some time. We might be able to uh, get get them back eventually. And what we want to do is, I think we do have two Haven advisors. Uh, one here in East Africa. No, that was wrong. I think we have them here in the recruiting regions. Yes, there is one. There's two. I think we don't have a third one. Those guys here were left to their own devices, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, they were. But they hired. Uh, they are now five instead of four, so not too bad. Okay, so that's essentially the team. So let me see what kind of team I can set up. And then that's also the end of today's mission, because next time we need to defend North uh, Africa. Boy, boy, uh, this is exactly the, uh, the type of mission that I don't want uh, to have. Uh, we were just clocking 450 supplies in there after recruiting our asses off. We don't need to lose more um, resistance operators. So let me see what kind of... Uh, squad I can put together. Yeah, we, yes, we do have enough soldiers to essentially go through that mission. We're going to go in with a triple specialist, which is fun because uh, that'll be a lot of aid protocol and just a shit ton of healing. We got um, two uh, frontliners, assaults, um, a ranger, Bit of cover removal with our technician, a gunner in the background and a sharpshooter. So I think overall we should be fine. Um, this is definitely a hard uh, mission to uh, pull off and we need to be fast and kind of decisively go in. I think overall that would be fine. Um, we don't have anyone with commanding abilities. No, we don't. Yeah, but that doesn't, that doesn't matter. We're going to we're going to be successful either way. Uh, the team is strong. I would be hard pressed to see what kind of force um, would be overwhelming to those nine guys. But that's going to happen in the next mission, guys. We're uh, going to be attacked and we need to defend ourselves. Thank you so much for watching this episode. A lot of um, yeah, building up and base management. So uh, that was fun. Um, if you like what you've seen, please leave a comment and a like down below. Uh, that means a lot to me and it helps the channel. See you in the next run and bye.